Hey guys. Hello. So this week we're getting ready to, well, actually we are releasing a brand new product of ours called the Analog Shift. Yes. This one's a little bit uh, unique. It's a pick. Super cool. It's a pick board that pretends to be a shift register, like a 595 serial to parallel shift register. Um, but instead of having eight outputs, it only has one, and that output is analog. So you shift your eight bits of data in to the port in here using power, ground, clock, latch, and data. And uh, when you latch it, the analog output of the chip there is set to a uh, seven bit value. No, no, incorrect. It's set to a voltage between zero and 3.3 .3 volts. With seven bits of resolution. Right, correct. So it's not really a seven bit value. And just like a shift register, these will daisy chain. So you can go from one of these boards to another, to another, to another, to another, with the port out. And then you get your little analog output right here. Uh, you've got your reference ground output right there. And uh, you've got an extra plus and minus there in case you needed to add some uh, stranger power needs. Uh, sometimes with these you do. Wait, remind me again what these five pins are the down The port here? out. So that just pretty much chains what you put into here? Kinda. Um, so you've got power, ground, clock, and latch. Those all just pass straight through. But this is the data out of this chip. Uh. So the data out of this chip feeds the next chip. So when you're shifting out bits and you've got two of these chained, you wouldn't just shift out eight bits, you'd shift out 16. The first eight that you shifted out would land on the second chip and the last eight would end up on the first because it's a register. You're just pushing things down through the register. I see, so it's not the analog output. No. Of the chip. So where That's does the analog output come? Uh -huh -huh. Okay, so for to make it simpler for those who aren't comfortable with shift registers, essentially you put in any 7-bit number from from 0 to 127 in to this magic chip and out you'll get an analog voltage between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts. Yes. Awesome. So that's the basic so version, awesome. but you can also daisy chain these together and they come with um, filtering capacitors on the uh, data lines and on the power so you can daisy chain a lot of these without running into any problems. Cool. And there's also some alternate power stuff going on in that corner. You've got a separate ground and power connection um, which is very useful for strange situations where you want slightly different power feeding each one of these guys um, but one ground connecting all of them together stuff like that. Okay. All right, so we've got that red wire coming out. Yeah, that's the analog output, and I just stuck a 1K resistor in there just to tie it down to ground so it's not floating around. And uh, we'll pull that out and uh, fire this thing up and let that microcontroller send out some numbers. So it's going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 all the way up to 127. We're halfway up already. So cool. You can see every time it's pausing, that's in between the number changes. So 0 to 127? It'll go up to 3.2 some volts. And then it'll go back to 0 and start over again. Whoa! Do it again! Do it again! It is doing it again. It just does this in a loop. I'll throw the code up on the screen. It's really simple. Sweet. So when you program this, you treat it like a shift register. Yes. You do your code exactly as if you were to do Exactly, yeah. Okay. And it will daisy chain with real 7400 shift register logic. Okay. It will work with it. I've okay. done it. Okay. It works fine. So if you want to combine this with a any of our other shift stuff, our other products like the uh, the AND8s coming up, the NPN8, the uh, 
TTL8, the shift me, um, any of these things will work just fine daisy chained up with this. Can I ask, why would you want to? Well, I will, well, I'll get my breadboards and I'll show you what you can do with this kind of technology. Okay. All right. Go analog shift. So that's a lot of wires. What's that all about? Yeah, it's not as complicated as it looks. Basically, we've got the microcontroller here. Mm -hmm. What kind isn't at all important for this application because this is such um, straightforward stuff. We've got three I.O. pins off of the microcontroller here. Okay. And those are controlling the uh, clock, latch, and data lines for our daisy chain of analog shifts. And you can daisy chain the analog shifts with any other shift register stuff, be it our stuff or anything 595 uh, based. It works fine and you can daisy chain them. So those three lines come into the first analog shift here. Okay. And um, out of that analog shift to the next one. So they just, you know, So chain. it's clock, signal, and latch? So clock, latch, and data. Okay. And what data are you sending? To Ones this? and zeros. Okay, so but to these specifically, it's a seven-bit number. Well, right? just like a normal shift register, these take eight bits, but it's only using seven of those bits to actually calculate the analog output. Okay. So because the the pick that's on here has a seven-bit DAC, and MIDI uses seven-bit. Okay. So. You know, I need seven bits of resolution, so these are seven bits. Okay. Okay, so the microcontroller is feeding um, 16 bits out. The first eight go to this, the second eight go to this. Okay, this one, the analog output is going into the input of this little pile here. And that is from, well, kind of, sort of, um, from MIMS notebook on 555 timers. Okay. And it's uh, A-stable. So, right. so what's it doing? It's oscillating. This capacitor charges up, falls, charges up, falls, charges up, falls, and as it comes up and down, the output pin is going low and high. And uh, I've modified it a little bit to be uh, voltage controlled. So you can actually apply a voltage to it to speed this up. So this 555 right here has a normal base operating frequency that it's oscillating at, which can be modified by the analog output of the first analog shift. So I can bring the frequency of this up if I want to in a controlled fashion. Um, I'm so confused. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> So the the propellers or your microcontroller or whatever sends out a signal, a voltage, no, not a voltage. Eight bits. Eight bits, right. Eight bits to the analog shift. Yes. The analog shift takes those, takes seven bits of the eight and turns it into an analog voltage. Yes. The analog voltage goes to the 555, yes. which makes that analog voltage become a sawtooth? Well, it's not making it become anything. That voltage is determining, well, helping to determine at which frequency the 555 A stable circuit oscillates. Okay, so whatever. So the 555 is creating a sawtooth, right? Yes. From that analog voltage. You could think of it as a sawtooth. It's just a bunch of really short pulses at a controllable frequency. Okay. So what happens to that? Okay, so the output of that 555 hops over this line into the input of that 555. And that one's based around the basic monostable circuit. Uh, and this is our input from our first 555 is the trigger pulse in. Okay. And the setup of this 555 determines how long it's going to lengthen the output pulse. So it turns it from a very short pulse into a pulse of a determinate length. And I've also modified this circuit to be voltage controlled as well. So the second 
analog shifts output hops on this rail comes through a little resistor here and is working with that 555 to uh, lengthen the pulse coming out of the first one so the higher the voltage the oh geez okay so the higher the voltage <laughs> on this one the narrower the up part of the outputting square wave is the lower the voltage here the wider oh so, so it's like a frequency it's like an audio frequency higher frequencies are higher you know well it's duty cycle it's shorter waves totally different but oh, okay well. we can show you visually what it looks like <laughs> here in a minute okay and then the output of this is just the audio out so it's going into a jack me and uh up to eddie's little uh demo speaker thing that she built so we can hear it okay all right um we're gonna monitor some of the stuff on the scope we're gonna monitor the analog output voltage of the second analog shift so that we can see where the uh the duty cycle control voltage is because that one changes more slowly and we're going to monitor the audio output itself so we can see the waveform and how the changing on this voltage affects that waveform. And I'm I'm sending out a lot of little 8-bit numbers to this thing to make it specifically play frequencies that sound good and to vary the uh, the control voltage here that controls how wide the pulses are going to be to bring that up and down slowly. Low frequency oscillation. Think of it that way. So as this goes up, you see that the tops get skinnier on the square wave. And as it goes down, they get fat. And you can hear how that changes the sound. So there's two 555s controlled by two analog shifts, and you could sequence the two 8-bit numbers out to these with any micro. You could do it with switches, you know, toggle switches if you felt like it, because this is these things emulate old 7400 logic, so it's you can interface it with literally anything. Cool. Alright, so there's my little demo project. Or what you can do with the analog shift and uh yeah chippy well it's square wave so i can't say squarey that doesn't make sense it's very chippy there you go chippy okay <laughs> huh. we post videos all the time so don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.